Hello everybody, this is the fifth class of Digital Systems Design Lecture Series. In today's class, we will discover some of the nice and neat combinational circuit design strategies. After establishing necessary background and reviewing the available tools in our past lectures, today we will be focusing on the design of combinational logic circuits in general and consolidated with different design examples, as this would be very helpful, I'm guessing, with your intern project. Today's lecture also includes some information on the use of open source software called Logisim. This software is kind of primitive, but yet able to perform many introductory circuit operations. The use of this software is recommended for this class, but you are more than welcome to use other softwares. Before moving any further, I want to make a remark that I have noticed stiff typos, misspellings, and glitches here and there in few places in previous lectures, so f please feel free to send those to me as I'd appreciate if you could help me improve the presentation of these lecture series in the future. Alright, with that being said, let's start. First off, I want to emphasize that a system design, or a circuit design in particular, as efficient as possible, is pretty hard to teach and learn. It, ex it requires a lot of expertises and time and devotion to develop confidence and get acquaintance with all the details of the whole design procedure. So la let's wind our clocks back a little and remember what combination and logic circuits were. It is a digital logic circuit implemented by Boland logic circuits, where the output is a pure function of the present input only. This type of circuit has K inputs and M outputs, where current, current state of each of the outputs is a function of the current state of the inputs at a given time. So there are M switching Boland functions that may or may not share the same logic, or expressed in different way, logic modules or gates in principle. Let's just review the combinational circuits in a nutshell, as you already have developed some kind of feel for it, but I still want to depict pictorially what's going on here. There are K inputs to the combinational circuit and M outputs. Each switching function maps 2 to the K possible input combinations to one bit valued output. So there are M distinct bowling functions that the logic circuit implements. The workaround procedure that implements these M bowling functions is known as the combinational or combinatorial logic circuit design. Here is a design procedure in six subsequent steps. You start with getting a list of specifications that will make the design circuit perform a certain job. You can alternatively start with writing your own and proceed to the next bullet item. Next, you derive the truth table, from which you can deduce Boolean expressions in terms of mean terms and max terms. The next phase to that is to invoke optimization techniques and apply them to produce uh, a kind of a reduction in the number of literals or whatever the optimization criterion you use in the final expression. The minimal expression, which is a typically a union of prime implicants, can be used to draw the final logic diagram and the net list, in other words, the list of AND, OR, and NOT gates used in the corresponding circuit, can be derived. Since it's not always efficient to use AND, OR, and invert inverter gates in an implementation, we map the circuit to the current implementable technology. Finally, we use math or simulation tools to verify the correctness of the design. Before giving a comprehensive design example, let me talk a little bit about the technology mapping. For that, we need a definition of a gate being universal. So in simple terms, a universal gate is able to mimic the operation of any other gate type. Most common tech technology mappings, or tech mappings in short, include the universal NAND and NOR gates, or the combination of both. Tech mapping helps reduce the area used on the surface of silicon wafer and the delay induced by logic gates. An additional fact is that, for example, NAND gate is preferable to NOR gates for three good reasons. NOR gate will occupy more silicon area than NAND gate. NAND uses transistors of similar size and NAND offers less delay. A real-world example is the solid-state devices which is a brilliant application of NAND technology. For completeness, however, we will cover both technologies in our class. 
First, we explain NAND gate mapping. AND, OR, and NOT inverter gates, also known as AOI gates, can be transformed into NAND gate implementations. AND NAND conversion is pretty straightforward, as it only consists of uh, adding one more NAT, NOT gate in front of a NAND gate to make up uh, one AND gate. OR NAND conversion is a bit more involved, but using the Morgan's law, life is much easier. I'll leave it to show how they relate as an exercise. NOT and NAND conversion is straightforward also, if you observe the Boolean axioms that A and A equals A itself. So please walk to, through it, the, the details of the, of the transformation, to convince yourself indeed these trans transformations make sense to you. Also a tip that you, you may want to keep in mind, NOT gates should first be eliminated before making the corresponding gate transformations, which is shown at the bottom of this slide. Let us have an example that given the function g, which is a prime plus a b prime plus um, a prime b in parentheses, and we inverted, inverted the whole thing, um, and its logic diagram, which is shown right below it, you can simplify this Boolean expression using the techniques we have learned so far, but let's just focus on the NAND gate transformation for the time being. This is drawn using the open source program Logisip. The first step is to identify the alternative non-representation of AOI gates. Once we apply the transformation techniques, we end up getting the logic diagram shown at the bottom. Next, we get rid of the unnecessary gates, non NOT gates from the logic diagram and replace the remaining NOT uh, gate with their equivalent NAND transformation. This example has shown the application of NAND transformation using a logic diagram that could have been simplified before transform transformation. I leave it as an exercise to simplify G and then redraw the circuit in terms of NAND gates. So, and then compare the circuits with and without simplifications in terms of NAND gates. NAND gate technology mapping is uh, quite similar in nature and or and not inverter gates can be transformed into universal NOR gates as shown. So please work it out the details to convince yourself. Indeed, these transformations make sense to you. Before giving the design example, I want to cover one less important step in a generic digital design framework, which is the verification stage. This uh, one of the verification approaches is the manual logic analysis in which we need to go backwards and redrive the true table and Boolean expressions based on the final circuit. Next, we have to verify that they both are aligning with the specified true table and or Boolean expressions. Second method is the simulation. We draw the logic diagram of the final circuit and simulate by testing each one of the possible inputs and check the expected output. The latter method is predominantly what we will use in this class. Let us consider our design example. We will be designing a combinational circuit that will convert a BCD or binary coded decimal code to XS3 code. So we name the design project as BCD to XS3 code converter. This code will simply add decimal 3 which is 0011 in binary to each of the BCD code words. We shall use multi-level optimizations to reduce the number of gates in the implementation and we use NAND technology mapping for efficiency reasons. This is the first time you will see how a multi-level optimization could be used to reduce the cost of an implementation. There are four inputs and four outputs to the circuit. Inputs from 1010 to 1111 in BCD code words do not map to anything, and they are therefore simply don't cares in our design. The corresponding four outputs, XS3 code words, are shown right hand side of the true table. Outputs are labeled as E, F, G, and H. For each output, we draw Carnot maps and independently optimize and reduce the logical expressions in their Boolean logic representation through identifying prime and essential prime implicants. Note here how the don't cares help ease our simplification work here. 
the final simplified expressions for each output are given as E being equal to A plus BD plus BC. F equals B prime D plus B prime C plus B C prime D prime. And G is given by C prime D prime plus C D. And finally, H equals D prime. If you use the number of inputs to the gates as our cost criterion, we will count 23 if we use flat implementation of these Boolean expressions. Here we show that the multi-level optimization is possible. In fact, very useful for this design example. One approach is to identify common terms, if any. In this example, we let T to be equal to D plus C. And it turns out that three variables E, F, and G contain T somewhere in their expression, or its inverse. In that case, E equals A plus B T. F equals B prime T and B T prime. You can also verify that using De, De Morgan's law. And G equals C D plus T prime. And finally, H equals D prime. We can show those using a combination of substitution or, or De Morgan's law. I leave the details to you to verify and, and, and uh, verify the details and um, convince yourself. Now the cost criterion G would be equal to 16, which is less than 23. Alright, so using the cross-functional simplifications and the common term T, we can implement the logic circuit as shown. This is the original logic implemented using AND, OR, and NOT gates. Notice that we use two input, AND and OR gates. So there is no three or more than three input AND or OR gates here. So next we replace AND and OR gates with the corresponding technology mappings. Also, keep the use frequency of NOT gates at minimum by trying not to invert a variable multiple times unnecessarily. From some point on, after applying all the techniques I showed you, you probably will need to use your own judgment when making decisions about the design. It could be the orientation of wires, where and when to use NOT gates or logic tricks that are, that are local to the circuit that will reduce the number of gate usages and things like that. Now you are starting to become an architect, and you may have already realized the design freedom when it comes to physical implementation of a mathematical expression. It might be also challenging, but at the same time intriguing, to start thinking about automating these steps executed manually to optimize a circuit in this example. The netlist consists of 8 NAND gates and 5 NOT gates and a bunch of wires. Here is the timing diagram of the design circuit. I leave it as an exercise to verify that all input combinations are covered in this diagram that spans around 120 nanoseconds of operation. In the open source software Logisim, there is no inbuilt timing diagram as far as I'm concerned. You either have to watch the log or read the log and plot the results yourself using third-party software tools. In Logisim, from Windows section, you can click on here combinational logic analysis. You will see that you can insert input variables and output variables right here. After manually inserting the input and output variables, you can define the Boolean expressions corresponding to each output variable. Here I show only the output variable E. Here I want to note that the build circuit button right at the bottom of the of the of the window right here builds the circuit without making any cross output variable optimizations so the software only can carry out two level optimizations so you still need a considerable amount of manual uh, simplifications to get the optimized implementation if you click on the minimize tab however you will you will see that the appropriate kernel maps and uh, and the circuit minimizations per output it's shown right on the um, uh, top right top uh, of this slide. Table tab shows the truth table. Two level optimizations, uh, you know, you still need a considerable amount of manual simplifications, as I said. So the output will not be even 
uh, near our optimized solution, which uses 8 NAND gates and 5 inverters. It is left as an exercise to build the circuit using Logism and observe the number of gates used. In summary, today we have covered a few important aspects of combinational logic circuit design. We have seen few circuit manipulation techniques and different technology mappings. Finally, we have seen a complete design example where we applied our accumulated digital logic design knowledge from previous classes. In the next lecture, we will continue combination logic design and exemplify the design framework by touching upon important combinational circuits such as decoders and multiplexers. Please feel free to drop any questions you might have about today's lecture into my email box. Thank you, and see you next time.